Before I get into today's project, I want to thank those who commented on my last project, which was the expansion jaws, shop made expansion jaws. Two particular fellas, one was the woodchuck, suggested that maybe slicing it down all four sides would work better. I had thought of that and didn't bother because I was expanding it such a little bit. But you might recall that at the end, I had a little trouble and had to put tape around it because it wasn't expanding enough after I sanded inside the napkin ring. Well, I tried it, I sliced both ways now, and it does work much better. So thank you for that, Woodchuck. Secondly, John suggested taping some fine sandpaper on there and it might hold a little better. I think that's a great idea. I didn't try it, but I can only assume it would work well. Thank you, John. So now let's get on with today's project. Hi there, my project today is to make a bracelet. Now I'm going to use this piece, I've put a tenon on one end so I can fit it into a scroll chuck. And I'm going to put pieces of wood around the outside. Now using the Pythagorean theorem, I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so I can find the diagonal. This is 1 and 7 eighths inches square. 1 and 7 eighths I happen to know is 1.875. So if I take my calculator and go 1.875 times 1.875, I get 3.516 to round it off to three numbers. Then if I take that times two, which is the same as saying a squared plus b squared, I get 7.03. Taking the root of that will give me the diagonal, which is 2.65. Now 2.65 is just under 2 and 3 quarters, which I happen to know is the size hole I need on the internal diameter of the bracelet for my wife's wrist. And if I'm making this bracelet, it better be for my wife. So my next step is going to be taking these pieces of zebra wood, which I'm hoping will make a nice bracelet, gluing one on here so it's flush on the outside of this side. Once that's dry, I'll take another piece, glue it on there, and as each one dries, I'll glue another one around until I've got pieces out past this one. I'll just cut this one off so I can use it for the third piece, cut this one off use for the fourth piece. To glue the first one on this side, I'm going to put this one against here so that when I push this on there, it's going to be flush. Now I've drawn a line at the top and I'm just going to put a little glue on there. Slide that along there a couple of times just to make sure the glue is spread out evenly. And clamp this. And once that glue dries, just for a few minutes, Put the next piece on this side. Now I'm going to make a mark at the outside edge and I'm going to take this to the table saw and cut it off. Then I'm going to use this end, bring it around and glue it in there. And there's a nice tight joint there so I'm going to put glue along here and along here. Make sure that that's glued together there. And I need a longer clamp. Put it along here. Let that dry for a few minutes, then I'll come back and do number three. Now it's time for number three.
a few minutes to dry, then I'll come back and do number four. Now it's time to glue number four on. Now I'll give that lots of time to dry real well and I'll be back. Take this over and round the corners on the disc sander and then put it on the lathe. All four pieces are glued on now. I left enough time for the glue to set well. Joints all appear to be very tight. Can't ask for much more than that. Now I had mentioned that my Wife needs a two and three quarter inch hole for her hand to fit through comfortably and be small enough that the bracelet won't fall off readily. So I've adjusted this compass to one and three eighths of an inch, giving me the radius of one and three eighths or two and three quarter inch diameter. She also does not like large clunky jewelry. So I want a bracelet that's fairly thin. I think I'll adjust it to about a half inch thickness and I can make it slimmer from there as I go along. I'll readjust this and draw that circle. I'm going to take this now to my disc sander and sand this down just slightly proud of that line. I started rounding the corners by holding it like this on the table of my disc sander and rotating it. But it's very hard to control because the disc is coming down across this face and that makes it want to wobble. I need to put it down this way. Now my outside diameter is three and seven eighths. The largest size hole I have in my template here is three and a half. So I put that on here, centered as well as I could by eye, drew a circle and I'm going to put it down on the disc sander and just leave it a good quarter of an inch outside this diameter. Then I'll take it to the lathe and start working on it. I've drawn a rough circle around here, approximately a quarter of an inch out. Now I'm going to use my disc sander to get down to that, roughly. It's going to get loud with the dust collector, so enjoy the tunes, and then I'll take this over to the lathe. Well, that got boring in a hurry. After all, what wood turner wants to spend his time sanding if he can be turning? So I just took the corners off so it doesn't chip out badly, and now I'm going to turn down to that line. I'll be turning at 1000 RPM using my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm going to raise that to 2000. I just want to give this a little bit of shaping. Not too bad. This other side is a little rough. I'm just going to do a little bit of shear scraping on there as well. And I'm going to sand it and try a parting tool, I think, to get it off of here. I'm going to use my spindle gouge now. Just take these corners off 
So I have a little more room to get in here and do some shear scraping, clean this up a bit. Gives me a little room to get in there now with my bowl gouge and do some shear scraping. It's not too bad. I think I'll do some sanding now. I set my dividers to one and three eighths inch so I'll get my two and three quarter inch diameter. I rarely sand beyond 400 grit but I want to see what kind of finish I can get on this so I went to 1000. Now I'm going to put some sanding sealer on it and then I'll put my finish on. For my sanding sealer I'm using a 50-50 mix of zincer seal coat and methyl hydrate. Wipe on a generous amount, give it some time to dry, then I'll sand it with the 1000 grit sandpaper that I ended at. And then I'll put some finish on. I'll be back after this is dried and I've sanded it. I'm going to use this friction finish again. One third shellac, one third boiled linseed oil, and one third lacquer thinner. I've used it on a number of types of wood, and I've liked it on all of them so far. I haven't used it on zebra wood, so we'll see how this goes. Just turn this down to 100 RPM to apply it. Again, I'll let it sit and dry for a few minutes, and then I'll buff it. Come back when I'm ready to buff this. Finish is dry now. I brought the tail stock up for a little support. I'm going to be spinning this at 3000 RPM to give it a good buffing and at that speed I don't want to take any chances at all. This is known as a friction polish and as such of course it's the heat generated by the high speed that causes it to cure and that's looking pretty good I'm happy with that. My next step will be to bring in a parting tool and part that off then I'm going to put this into coal jaws to finish the inside. I'm going to use my parting tool to part this off Try not to bust through the back side too quickly. I could feel it as it was giving way on the back. I didn't chip it out too badly on the back side. I think that's going to work because I'm going to round this over a little bit anyway. I'll put this in the coal jaws and go to work on it. I'm going to use my bowl gouge now. 
do a very gentle shear scraping just to round this over. Then I'm going to sand the inside at least halfway through, put my sanding sealer and finish on it, then I'll reverse it and do the other side. Okay, I think that's rounded off enough. I'm just going to sand in there now. Well, it didn't turn out too bad. It's not my favorite bracelet, but it's all right. I kind of like zebra wood. We'll have to see what the boss says about it. It's not the only one I've turned for her. Quite a few in here. Some I made out of acrylic pen blanks. It turned out pretty nice. And some with uh, lace wood, paduke, and I think that's ebony in there. Some with walnut and maple, two different ways. And there's so many different things you can do. You don't have to just put these straight on there. You can put smaller pieces around. You can cut the ones at the corner at 45 degrees and put a little wedge in there to make it different, which is what I did with this one. Well, I hope that gives you something to think about. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day in your shop. Remember to be safe. Thanks for stopping in. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.